In this video, we will look at how to visualize the changes that are happening with a traveling wave through the use of graphs. We will begin by discussing displacement against distance graphs before moving on to displacement against time graphs for both transverse and longitudinal waves. Each type of graph is useful for getting various pieces of information about the wave, and we will go through how to create each type of graph for both waves. Let's begin by considering this transverse wave moving from left to right. As the disturbance passes through the medium, each particle in the medium is displaced by some amount, and the size and direction of that displacement changes with both position along the wave as well as with time. This is too complex to graph easily, so when we graph waves, we hold one of those two variables constant, allowing us to look at how the displacement of the medium varies for just one variable at a time. In a displacement against distance graph, we will hold the time constant. We can think of this like taking a snapshot of the wave like this, and then we can look at how different parts of the medium are displaced from their equilibrium positions at this one instant of time. On our graph, the x-axis will be the distance along the medium starting from the left side of the diagram. The y-axis will be the displacement, where we have set the upwards direction to be a positive displacement. From this snapshot, we can see that the three red points located at distances of 0, 4 and 8 centimeters all have the maximum positive displacement at this time. So we can go ahead and plot those points on our graph like this. These two blue points located at 2 and 6 centimeters are at maximum negative amplitude. We can also add these yellow points here, where the displacement is 0. This process can be repeated for more and more points, and then a smooth curve can be drawn to connect all of our points like this. Notice how this graph is simply the wave frozen in time, as we have mentioned. This type of graph represents the displacement of all of the points in our medium at a specific instant of time. We can find the wavelength of the wave from this graph, which we can recall is the distance between two adjacent points that are in phase like this, giving us a value of 4 cm. We can also determine the amplitude of the wave from this graph like this, giving us a value of 3 cm. However, we can't find out any information about the frequency or the period for the wave because those are dependent upon time. We can repeat a similar procedure for a longitudinal wave. Looking at our wave here, we have all of these points oscillating from left to right as our wave moves across the screen, where the dashed grey vertical lines represent the equilibrium positions of the points. If we now take a snapshot of this wave, freezing it at this one specific instant of time, some of the particles in the medium are displaced to the right of their equilibrium positions and some are displaced to the left. We will now simplify this snapshot and create a graph that represents how much each particle along the wave has been displaced from its equilibrium position. These lines show how much each particle has been displaced at this instant of time. On our graph, the y-axis will represent the displacement of the particles where we have set displacements to the right to be positive. The x-axis of our graph is the position in the medium, where the particle will be located along the medium when it is not disturbed. These particles highlighted in yellow have not shifted from the equilibrium position, so we can add those locations to our graph. The particles in orange here are all shifted to the right by about 0.75 centimeters. The red particles are both shifted 1 cm to the right, and their equilibrium positions were at 2 and 10 cm, so we can add those on the graph. The remaining particles are all shifted to the left, so they will have negative displacements. The light blue particles are shifted to the left by about 0.75 cm, and the darker blue particles are shifted to the left by 1 cm. A smooth curve can then be drawn to connect all of our points. Notice how the displacement against distance graph for a longitudinal wave looks like a transverse wave. This graph shows that all of the particles with positive displacement are shifted to the right, and all the particles with negative displacement are shifted to the left. Therefore, given just this graph, we can infer that these points of zero displacement are compressions because all of the particles are pushed together here, and these points of zero displacement are rarefactions because the particles are very spread out. So the compressions and rarefactions alternate on our graph at these points of zero displacement. Similar to before, we can get the wavelength of our wave like this, which has a value of 8 cm. We can also determine the amplitude of our wave, which is 1 cm. This graph can't tell us anything about how the wave changes over time, and for that we will need a different type of graph. 
Instead of holding the time constant, we will now hold the position in the medium constant and look at how the displacement of a single point in the medium changes with time. We can imagine we are putting a screen in place so that we can only see a single point. Rather than watching how the whole wave moves through our medium, we can just look at the motion of this shallow particle as it oscillates in the medium. We will now want to create a graph of displacement against time for this yellow particle. So our x-axis on the graph will be time, and the y-axis will represent the displacement of that single particle at a particular time, where we will choose displacements that are upwards to be positive. This animation will now draw out the displacement time graph. The particle begins by moving downwards. It starts moving back upwards, and then moves downwards again, and the motion repeats. If we were to create this graph manually, the important points to plot would be the times at which the particle is at its negative amplitude, at zero displacement, and its positive amplitude. Then a smooth curve can be drawn to connect all of the points. Notice how the particles that constitute the wave are all undergoing simple harmonic motion, and that the graph is sinusoidal in shape and resembles a graph of simple harmonic motion. We can use this graph to determine the amplitude to be 3 centimeters because we are plotting the displacement. We can also look at the time it takes for our particle to to complete one full oscillation, which would be the period. That would be this time here, 5 seconds. Any two points that are one full oscillation apart can be chosen, so that could be from two troughs or from two crests. We can now record this relation that relates the period to the frequency, so the frequency of the wave can also be determined from this graph. However, we can't use it to find wavelength because we are looking at a single point in the wave. We will repeat a similar procedure for longitudinal waves. We want to focus on the motion of a single particle in the medium, such as this yellow one, and track the position against time for our particle. Time will once again be on our x-axis, and displacement will be on the y-axis, where we choose displacements to the right to be positive. This animation will now draw out the displacement time graph. Notice again how the displacement against time graph for a longitudinal wave is a graph of a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion and is sinusoidal in shape. The amplitude for our wave is this distance here, which has a value of just under 1 cm. We can also look for the time for our pattern to repeat, the period, which is 5 seconds. We will now take a look at these two types of graphs side by side. Given both of these graphs, we can determine the direction that the wave is travelling. Starting from time 0 seconds, the displacement of the yellow particle is negative. Now let's locate the position of this particle on the graph to our left. If we shift this wave slightly to the right, as shown by the green wave here, we can see that the yellow particle has moved to a negative displacement, matching what is observed in the displacement time graph, so our wave must be travelling to the right. In addition, recall this equation stating that wave speed is equal to wavelength divided by the period, or equivalently, frequency multiplied by wavelength. Since wavelength and period can be determined from each of these graphs, we can use these values to calculate the speed of the wave. The wavelength of the wave is 4 cm, and the period of the wave is 5 seconds, so the speed of the wave has a value of 0.8 cm per second. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. When we graph waves, we hold one of two variables constant. A displacement against distance graph holds time constant, and shows the displacement of all of the points in our medium at a specific instant of time. This type of graph allows us to determine both the wavelength and amplitude of the wave. A displacement against time graph holds position in the medium constant, and describes the displacement of a single particle in the medium with time. This type of graph allows us to determine the period, frequency, and amplitude of the wave. Each type of graph is sinusoidal in shape for both transverse and longitudinal waves. The graphs can be used in conjunction with one another to determine the wave speed and direction. This now concludes our video about representing waves graphically.